What's up guys? Welcome back to Vanover Customs and in today's video we're going to be jumping into shop updates, some announcements and just general housekeeping and what's going on in the shop. So if you're looking for a fabrication or machining video, watch out for our next one. This is just kind of some odds and ends. I know a couple of people will appreciate it. So let's jump right in. So the biggest announcement that we have here is that we are doing an open shop day. Now this is something that I've gone back and forth on. I think ultimately I'm just gonna open it up to whoever wants to come. Uh, so on September 26th, 27th, and 28th, we are going to do a group event. Uh, on September 28th is Arn Fest. So the idea is that on the 26th and on the 27th, we're gonna do a scrape and hangout class type uh, deal. So it'll be really unofficial. We're gonna see if we can get Ron Grundy to come down. I know Greg from Little Mule, uh, the YouTube channel is going to be here, as well as I have a friend of mine, uh, his name is Daniel. He works as a scraper hand and he's expressed interest in coming. Now he does typically work during the day, so I'm not sure if he's going to be able to come. Uh, I'm still trying to hear back from him. But the point is, is if you like working on old equipment, namely scraping, or you just want to come, say hello, hang out and talk about machinery, it's going to be basically an open invitation. I'm not going to be doing any jobs in the shop that day. I'm just going to be here. So if one person shows up and wants to talk my ear off for two days and then go to Arnfest with us, great. Um, if a bunch of people want to come, that's totally fine as well. Again, it's an open invitation. I have literally zero expectation. Um, maybe no one's gonna show up or maybe 20 people, I have no idea. So my shop's like 3,000-ish square feet. Uh, we have a big surface plate, a small surface plate. So we'll just kind of play it by ear. If there's a couple of guys here, we'll order some pizzas or grab some food, um, hang out, share stories. I think it'll be a good time. Um, really not a whole lot to it. Obviously it's free. Um, this is just more of a chance to practice scraping, maybe talk to some people who are a little farther along, myself included, and maybe some of you guys, and really just kind of hang out, maybe meet some of you guys and uh, answer questions or whatever. You know, it's really unofficial. So just to be clear about that again, so 26th, which is a Thursday, uh, and 27th will be in my shop, um, and that'll be probably, I don't know, 10 to 6 or you know, nine to five, something like that. Um, and then on Saturday, we are gonna go to Arnfest. Um, it's gonna be pretty unofficial. We're going there on Saturday because of the swap meet. Um, so we'll go to the swap meet, and then if some of us wanna walk around at the train museum, we can. Um, and then that's up to you if you wanna stay for Sunday or whatever you wanna do. It's gonna be extremely loose. I'm just kinda letting you know what I'm gonna be doing, and then if you wanna participate, uh, great. So if you want the details, uh, as we get closer, please reach out to me. My phone number is 847-890-9969 or shoot me an email at vanovercustoms.com. You can either text me or call me um, and uh, you know we'll kind of go from there. So that's the first thing. The next thing is uh, I want to talk about some jobs we've had in the shop in the last week. I know a lot of you guys want to know, like, what does Vanover Customs actually do? You see mostly videos on working on my own equipment, and there is a reason for that. That reason is I have chosen to set up my machine shop with a no debt motto, meaning that most guys will move into a space, they'll take out a loan, they'll get a bunch of nice machines, and they'll go straight to work. Uh, that's one model. The good news doing that is you don't got to work on your equipment, you can start making parts. The bad news is you got you know, debt on each machine and you got to use those machines to sort of make money immediately to pay back that loan. Instead, I've taken a slower approach and it does work a lot better with manual machines as well in that I'm buying each machine uh, separate. I'm trying to do work with that machine, uh, but also slowly restoring or refreshing it and then over time, I'll have several machines that are paid off. I, own, I, I don't owe anyone for the equipment, but as a result, in the first five years of owning that business, it's gonna be very machinery focused. 
and that is what you guys have seen as I've moved out of a two-car garage into this here shop. So we do do loads of work outside of what you do see on a wide range, and I do want to share more and more of that content with you as we go. And hopefully as we become busier, we'll have most of our machines set up and we'll be doing more jobs. But in the interim, um, I thought I would just kind of share some of the jobs we did last week to give you a sampling of some of the stuff that we do. So let me just kind of give you a walk around and let you know what we did last week. All right, guys, we're going handheld for this, so it's going to be a little bit shaky, but I wanted to just kind of do it naturally and show you what we're working with, how we're set up. So I'm over here at the lathe, and I don't have the part because we finished it for a customer, but one of the jobs we did last week on this bad boy here was we did a metric threading job. Um, and maybe I'll throw a pickup of what we did here, but we had a customer come in with a Segway scooter, and they needed a handle made. The handle was back ordered, and so they couldn't get it, and they use it to get to and from work. Keep in mind, we are in Chicago, so that's pretty common. And basically, it was a left-hand thread aluminum part, uh, and it was metric threading. So another little bonus here is, if you'll know anything about this lathe, it is not set up for metric threading. And I have not had metric threading the entire time I've been in the shop, but I figured out how to do metric threading with it. I made some gears, uh, did some calculations, and we got that job done. I am gonna do a video on metric threading on a standard lathe because there are some stuff that I figured out that I think would be beneficial for other people uh, if they're in a similar situation. Uh, but that was kind of one of the jobs we did last week. Pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. The other thing we did last week is we picked up two rotary welding devices and we did a scrapyard haul. So I actually am going to be doing a review. This is the first sponsored review I'm doing in five years. Uh, but Vivor wanted me to send me this. Uh, well, more specifically, I needed one of these. I was going to order a ProArc system. Um, however, those are three or four thousand dollars and I learned that they're actually made in Taiwan and Vivor has been emailing me incessantly for the past three years and I've been declining all of the emails because I don't like Chinese stuff however um, I thought hey if I'm gonna pay several thousand dollars for a Taiwanese unit what is the Chinese unit and that was uh, this Vivor unit came up and it was like 800 bucks and so I actually went to put it in my cart and I was thinking about buying it and they emailed me again and I thought, you know what, what the heck. They offered to send it to me for free and uh, I need it for a job, I would have bought it anyway. And so we're gonna do a review on that. And then sitting next to it as a contrast is an American made rotary table. Um, so we have China over here on the right and then we have USA. I picked this up for a repair that we're gonna be doing a video on um, and actually did not end up needing it, but this one's brand new in Chinese and this one is 20 years old and it's American. So it'll be interesting to see kind of what the difference is quality wise and if the Chinese one will suffice. And then while we're over here at the table, this metal here I picked up and I kind of marked the costs uh, of what this would be on McMaster car. I actually picked this up at a scrap yard for no more than I want to say $40 for all of that. And we're looking at four and a half inch, or I'm sorry, four inch diameter stainless, three billets, two hydraulic rod, that's just steel, probably 1045, and a seven inch piece of 6061. And so I was pretty excited about that because uh, that stuff came out to a little over two Gs if I would have bought that stuff brand new. And obviously when you're machining, Obviously, I don't have the certs, but functionally, it will work just fine when the job arises. So that's kind of uh, some of the stuff we did last week. Another thing we did last week is we had a, gosh, a bus from 1975 in here. I'll throw a picture over here. Um, we were doing an AC repair. It's a vehicle that no other shops wanted to work on, and uh, we got that fixed up nice. Um, we do do automotive work like I've discussed in the past. 
I don't advertise it and um, you know that's not my main focus but since I've done it for 20 years uh, customers who know me know that I do it and so we do do a decent amount of that most of it tends to be uh, heavier stuff like in that case it was a large bus I do some stuff on like F450s 350s E350s stuff like that as well we have a Patriot in here that's just getting some random stuff uh, but yeah, that's a job that we did last week as well. And the last job that we did that I'm going to tell you guys about is over here at the mill. We actually made a prototype uh, for a printer. So this company makes printers um, that print on materials that are three-dimensional, I guess I would say. And they sell the machines, but the tooling is custom based on what their customer wants to print. So we ended up doing a combination of machining and another process that I will hide for now, um, but we'll reveal later to you guys in order to get them a prototype. So we're currently in the process of working with them to get them uh, a unit that will work for their own customer. So we did part of that over here on the mill and uh, I will not show you a picture of that for other reasons, but uh, just letting you know what we're doing. And then finally, and this will be new to you guys who are seeing this, is we've been working on the boring mill. Now we are going to be doing a series of videos on this, so this is a little bit of a sneak peek. Uh, but when I am not doing the jobs that I mentioned before, and we also did several jobs that I didn't mention, uh, I am over here working on this guy. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later, um, but currently I have parts of it over here on my bench and we're remaking some components. I'm not going to get too much into that because we have videos on that. But yeah, we're working on the boring mill and we're making some parts and fixing some parts. So those will be fun videos coming up. So we talked about some work we did last week. So what do we have coming up this upcoming week in the shop? Uh, the first job here is we have an engine block. We will be doing a video on this or at least that's my hope as long as it doesn't go sideways. This is a Subaru 2.5 engine. Generally, we do not do automotive machining work. There is usually a pretty significant difference in tooling between automotive machine shops and general machine shops. However, this is a type of job that would be well suited for our shop, and it is a bolt extraction job. So just to give you a little preview, Uh, this is for a, another shop. Basically, they have a head bolt that is in that bottom hole there that when they went to reassemble the engine, uh, the head bolt snapped at 15 foot-pounds, uh, or so I have been told. And so it sounds like it is a faulty bolt, and the bolt is stuck in there, and it's in there like four inches deep. Um, I, I extrapolated that a little bit, or exaggerated that. Uh, it looks like about two inches deep to the head of the bolt, but still pretty deep, um, deeper than a normal end mill would be to go in there and cut that out. Um, so that will be a fun one, and I'm going to try to make a video as long as we have time. And, uh, you know, no promises on this job for the customer. And so if we can do it, happy days. And if we can't, it is what it is. It's going to be tricky. Uh, but we got that coming up. Another job that we have on the back burner, sort of, and we have a piece of material here for it, is we have to make a pin boss for an excavator bucket. So that is an 8-inch piece of hot roll, I believe. Heck, I don't know. I think it's 1045, possibly. And uh, we need to make a pin boss or basically like a gigantic spacer for a bucket excavator. So I'm going to do a video on that. People usually like that type of stuff. It's going to be heavy turning. We're going to be cutting that, you know, basically in a third. And then we're going to be machining away like 60% of it. So we're going to be doing a bunch of heavy turning and making a lot of chips. So that job is not urgent. Uh, it's for a buddy of mine, Patrick, uh, who I've done some line boring work with. And he had purchased, I don't know, 15 buckets at an auction, and they were all in states of disrepair. So he needs me to kind of make that part for that bucket. And there will be other things for other buckets 
he needs. So he's planning on fixing the buckets up and selling them for a profit, um, but I need to make that at some point in the next few weeks. So we got that job coming up as well. And then we're over here at the K&T for no particular reason while I tell you about the last job that we have coming up that I'm gonna share is we are working with some doctors. Uh, they do wanna make some custom medical tooling that kind of either doesn't exist or a Chinese knockoff exists and they want a high quality replacement. So we are going to be uh, basically prototyping and coming up with some products for them that they can sell on a small to medium scale. And so I've already made them one prototype and uh, they're hoping to come back in and discuss where we can go from there. Uh, again, no relation to the K&T mill. I thought I'd just kind of give you an idea of that job. Um, I don't know what specifics I can share, so I'll kind of leave it at that. Um, but yeah, so we have that. That's, you know, something we need to address in the next several weeks. All right, so now that you've kind of seen some idea of some of the jobs we do, uh, I just kind of wanted to touch on that because I always get questions about what kind of stuff do you guys actually do? Do you just sit around and restore machines all day? And sometimes we do that sometimes if we're slow. Um, in the summer, it's pretty dang busy, similar to a lot of other shops. So, you know, usually I'll get, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 hours in a week on working on my own equipment. Um, you know, when you're working 60, 70 hours, maybe you do 40 hours on customer stuff. And then once the customer work is done, then I'll take the spare time I have and work on my own equipment. And the winter, it does usually get a little bit slower. So sometimes, you know, it can definitely flip flop. It just depends on the week. Um, but hopefully you kind of enjoyed that sampling of what type of stuff we do. Generally uh, speaking, we are a job shop and we are specifically focusing on repair work. All right. So what that means is if something is fixed or needs to be fixed or it's broken, that's us. If it's weird, if it's unusual, um, that's also us. Uh, we do a lot of strange stuff around here that other shops don't want to do or couldn't do. Not because we're better than them, quite the opposite, just because we're willing to take some time, learn, fail, learn, and uh, kind of come to a solution. So um, that's what we're kind of focusing on is just odds and ends, random stuff, and that's kind of what we do. And in doing that, we do have to machine new parts. Uh, we have to weld, we have to repair parts. There's a variety of things, but most of that falls under the repair category, whereas most other machine shops, I would say 90% of them are manufacturing, right? They're making multiples of products um, and they try to stay in their lane. So um, yeah, that's kind of an idea of what we do. Now, uh, a couple other updates. So. I'm standing in front of this piece of machinery that you probably have seen in the background of some videos and I just shared earlier in this video. Um, so let me kind of let you know what's going on here as well as what's going on with the Lion Lathe. Now you guys are seeing this video in real time, meaning that when I film it and when I release it, there's probably no more than a week. Uh, however, as a lot of you may know, we have been behind between filming and editing. So the last couple of videos that you've seen were about six months ago in real time. That angle plate video was actually in October of last year, so almost nine months behind. We are making really good progress and catching up uh, by doing one video a week, um, but we're still behind. And all that to be said, the last several videos you've seen have been of the lion lathe and it's been pretty consistent. Uh, but the update on that is we've actually stopped the restoration. Now we are going to continue the restoration on that machine and it was not my desire to stop it. However, we had a couple jobs come in uh, that really needed to be done on this machine I'm standing in front of. And to be honest, uh, I just thought, you know what? It may be wise to pause the lion lathe to get this up and running quickly so that if those jobs come in, more of them, it's not as difficult on me, all right? And one of those jobs was a line boring job that we actually did on the radial drill. We filmed it. We will show it at some point, uh, but that would be perfect to do over here, but it was kind of a pain in the butt to do over there just because it wasn't really the best tool for the job. So um, we paused the lion. 
We started on the boring mill, so good news, you're gonna get some boring mill content and a break from the Lion Lathe project, uh, but it's my hope, and this probably isn't reality, um, but that we can kind of address this machine quickly and get back onto the Lion, because I really wanted to get the Lion done this year because I need it to get to work. Um, but how a lot of things always go with me is they get more involved. Now, I'm gonna be frank with you, this machine is not a full-blown restoration, and that is not the intent. The intent was to get it wired, get it powered up, get it running, and get it to work. And that is still the game plan. However, we have found a lot of broken parts on this machine uh, just due to abuse, and so functionally, we are addressing those. This machine is getting painted by hand, and we'll go getting into more detail. No Bondo work, nothing crazy, no scraping, nothing. Uh, we're just fixing what is broken and getting it up and running. It's already been wired in, air's been run, it does start and move, uh, but there are some practical things that I'm addressing and doing a video series on that. So that's what's going on with the Lion, and that's what's going on with the Boring Mill. Uh, overall, I know you guys are gonna enjoy that stuff. This is a large machine, it's pretty interesting. Um, and we got it torn down uh, decently far, and I think we're going to be tearing it a little bit farther. So I think that'll be uh, some cool content there. Now, in regards to the channel, uh, where are we? What are we doing? What's the update there? So we've been posting one video a week. I shared earlier in the year that it was my goal to really do every other week consistently, but in the beginning to do every week to catch up. Um, and we've been doing every week without fail for like seven months, and I think we're gonna do that indefinitely. Now at some point, I will probably get overly taxed and I have to scale back to every other week, uh, but until that moment, uh, we're gonna try to keep it to every other week, uh, not only so we can get that backlog fulfilled and be more current, but also just kind of provide great content for you. So right now, I'm editing a video on one week Chris is editing a video on another. I don't know if you can tell who does what, um, but that's how we're able to kind of do every other week and we kind of stair step it. So I'll get a break one week, he'll get a break. Kind of gives us two weeks to kind of do a video uh, for each of us. So that's kind of the update with that. Um, other than that, that's pretty much everything I want to hit on in this video. This is more of a housekeeping video, just kind of letting you know what's going on. The main point here was the shop get together. Again, you got my phone number, you got my email. Uh, reach out to me and uh, we'll be able to try to make that happen and have just kind of a fun day where we shut our operations down and just kind of hang out and talk shop and maybe learn a little bit of scraping. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you guys like these type of videos, I'm not even gonna post it on Saturday. I'll throw it on a Wednesday. Um, because I know most people aren't going to really watch it, but I'm okay with that. Uh, it's really just to get that information out to you, and I'm curious to see what you guys think. So we'll catch you in the next one, and uh, get out there and have some fun in the machine shop.